So I finally had the chance to install one of these new R454B air conditioning systems. With these systems, the A12 refrigerant has a leak dissipation control board that has to be wired into all the control wiring between the thermostat and the furnace or the air handler. So that's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to show you guys how this thing is wired up, how it works. This is going to become standard control wiring in all these new units. So we're all going to have to deal with it at some point. Now in the center here we have our leak dissipation control board. This is a board that gets mounted externally um, on the outside of the unit itself. It's kind of like a uh, zoning system control board. It just gets mounted right to the side of the unit or on the wall or on the ductwork itself. Um, now this board has two wiring harnesses that come out of it. Uh, the wiring harness from the board to the actual leak sensor itself. Now this sensor is located in the evaporator coil. So this is actually in the airstream where the air passes over the coil and enters into the house. Now this uh, wiring harness is connected at both ends with a Molex plug, so it's pretty straightforward. It then has another wiring harness that comes out of the dissipation board and it goes into the unit itself. So we're talking about near the control board for the air handler or the furnace. And this has a whole bunch of individual wires with all kinds of labels on it. So you see here we have our leak dissipation board, right, with all the wires that are coming out of it. And these will, there should be labels on the wires themselves, uh, say G in, G out, W out, W in, Y in and out, and so forth. So before I dive into wiring and how this all works, it's really easy to understand it from this perspective. The whole point of the leak dissipation board is to interrupt the call for cooling or heating between the thermostat and the unit's control board. So the control board for the air handler or the furnace will not get that 24 volt signal for cooling or heating if it detects a leak in the system. So it works essentially the same way as a flow switch. On a flow switch, we're usually interrupting the 24 volt signal between the furnace control board and the thermostat. So if our condensation drain line is plugged up, it'll open a switch and our 24 volts from our furnace never makes it to the thermostat. So the thermostat cannot pass that 24 volt signal to initiate a cooling or heating mode. So our leak dissipation board basically works under that same principle. It interrupts that heating or cooling call from the thermostat so that it never makes it to control board. So you're gonna see what I mean as we go through the sequence of the wiring here. So let's start at the R terminal at the uh, air handler or furnace control board. That's where the 24 volt source originates from the 24 volt transformer in the unit. And as we just discussed, it sends that 24 volts up to the R terminal on the thermostat. Now, let's say the thermostat's calling for heating mode. It's gonna take that 24 volts off the R terminal, send it to the W terminal. And from there, before we have to wire these systems in, that white wire off the W terminal would go directly to W1 on the furnace control board. But what we're doing now is instead of going directly to W1, we're sending that 24 volts on that white wire to the leak dissipation board. Um, just like we would with a flow switch. It has to go through there first before it gets back to the control board. So you can see we have a wire labeled W in. That is the 24 volts coming in from our thermostat to the dissipation board. Once the board detects that there's no leak in the system, it will then pass that 24 volts to the W out wire. And that W out wire is the wire that actually gets connected to the W1 terminal on the furnace. So basically just like a float switch, if the leak sensor were to pick up a leak of 454B refrigerant in the airflow, uh, it would cut off the power between WN, which is a 24 volts coming in from the call for heat from our thermostat, and cut it off so that it doesn't make it to the W1 terminal to actually fire up the furnace. Now on a call for cooling, it's basically the same thing. We have power from the R terminal on our control board inside the unit, goes up to the R terminal on our thermostat. On a call for cooling, the 24 volts jumps from the R terminal on the thermostat to the Y terminal, and we have a yellow wire from our thermostat making its way back inside the unit near the control board. Now, the difference here between heating and cooling is that you'll notice on our diagram here, 
the heating wire has a wire nut that connects directly from the white wire coming from the thermostat to the W in wire. So we don't actually land on the W terminal here on a call for heat. Whereas on a call for cooling, we still land on that Y terminal. So nothing has changed here. We're still bringing that yellow wire from our thermostat to the yellow wire terminal on our control board. And the reason why we can do this is because that Y terminal does not actually activate cooling mode. Uh, cooling mode is activated when the contactor in the outdoor unit pulls in. That's the part of the system that activates the refrigerant and creates the actual cooling. So this Y terminal here at most might just indicate a blower speed or something like that. So we're still not activating cooling just yet. So we could still land on that terminal. What has changed, however, is that normally we would have a second wire coming off of this Y terminal that does go out to the contactor in the outdoor unit. We're no longer doing that. We're taking this 24 volts off that Y terminal and we're sending it through the leak dissipation control board just like we did with the heating. Now the G terminal or that green wire coming from our thermostat from our blower, that's no different. We still have to go through the leak dissipation board. So we're no longer gonna take that green wire from a thermostat and land it on the G terminal on our control board in the unit itself. We have to wire nut it directly to the G in wire so that 24 volts off of the G terminal thermostat goes through the dissipation board and then makes its way on G out to the actual G terminal on the control board in the unit. Now the purpose for this is so the leak dissipation control board can still retain control over the fan motor um, if there is a leak detected in the system. The goal here is to keep that blower running so that that A2L refrigerant cannot build up in a confined space inside the unit to an actual flammable level. So we're gonna keep pushing this air through and even though that is going to push the refrigerant through the duct system and into the home, um, the amount of refrigerant in these systems, let's say four or five pounds, is not enough. Um, if Even if that whole charge were to enter the entire house, there's so much volume of air in the house that the refrigerant will not reach a flammable level. It's only in that confined space where there's much less air. That's what we're worried about. So um, if you're wondering, this stuff is supposedly non-toxic. You're not gonna die in your sleep from carbon monoxide poisoning or anything like that. Um, the whole goal here is to dissipate it so that we can't allow this to build up to an actual flammable level inside the unit. Now, another thing we have to cover is the power for the leak dissipation control board itself. It has indicator lights, so it needs power for that. Um, this is something that's also a little different as far as the carrier systems I've seen anyway. Rather than taking power off of that R terminal, these carrier control boards now have a SEC-1 terminal that takes power off of that to power the leak dissipation control board. I haven't done any other brands yet, so if you do see something different out there, let me know. Uh, but the 24 volt power will go from SEC 1 to the dissipation control board. And then of course it returns back on a common, which goes to the common on the furnace area on the control board as well. One more thing to cover here before we finish up is that you, in a two stage system, so second stage cooling Y2, second stage heating W2, that does not have to go through the leak dissipation control board. We wire those directly to the terminals in the furnace or air handling control board like we always have. And the reason for this is because if we're controlling first stage cooling or heating, we're also controlling second stage. So if we lose first stage cooling, we're also gonna lose second stage cooling. If we lose first stage heating, we're gonna lose second stage heating. So there's no need to run all those wires through the dissipation control board. We could just do all that through the first stages. So that's really all about there is to it. I hope that helped you guys out. If you do see some different stuff out there, let me know. I haven't seen it all yet. So thanks for watching.